Hello. Oh, hi there. Hello, How pleased to meet you. Hello, I'm Robert. Please to hi, meet Robert. you. Hi, Robert, you're right, I'm Dan. <laughs> Dan, hello. Actually, let me change my name, I don't know why it's come up, Mr. Bice. There we go. Nice, right. nice capital A for some reason, let's change that as well. <laughs> okay. Right. Lovely. Well, nice to nice to meet you. How uh, how are you doing today? Enjoying the the heat? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, it's uh, it's quite a hot day. Yeah, it's a little bit difficult. Yeah, just a bit. <laughs> Definitely requires a fan. Definitely. So, um, what what was it that got you um, interested to to contact us, or or how did you get in touch and all that? I've been reading Enjoy Life Forever during the lockdown. I downloaded it from JW.org. Oh right. And uh, how are you finding it so far? Um, well, it's a little different to what I'm used to. When I did go to church, some of the teachings were a bit different. Sure. Um, but, and what, um, what was it? What church did you used to be with? I used to go to um, evangelical church. Okay. Um, I've never cool. been a church member. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I tried a few. Um, but... Um, it's chapter 15 that particularly in, uh, particularly shocks me because it says Jesus was resurrected as a spirit. Do you mind if I read it on page 63, please? Yeah, sure. Put it in front of me. <clears throat> it's paragraph three, where is Jesus now? And it says, after Jesus's life as a human ended, he was resurrected as a spirit and he returned to heaven. There God exalted him to a superior position now Jesus has a position of great authority, second only to Jehovah himself. Um, obviously, I believe Jesus returned to heaven, and I yes, I believe that the Father exalted to the Son, exalted the Son to a position of great authority. So I have no problem with that. It's the comment that he was resurrected as a spirit. Okay. So, what, what is it about that that you have a problem with? Well, when Jesus resurrected, which means to stand up again obviously in the same body um, he prophesied he would surely stand up in the same body when when he appeared to his disciples he showed them his hands and his feet to prove mm, that the body them. that he had appeared to them in was the same body that dry, died on the tree surely um, do you mind if I read John twenty twenty seven? yeah let me just bring it up to you. hold on John 20 27 yep then he said to thomas reach your finger here and look at my hands reach your hand here and put it into my side do not be unbelieving but believing so he, he's telling him to handle his the marks of crucifixion in his hand and in his side that wouldn't make any sense if this was a body that never died on the tree yet it has the signs of crucifixion yet it never died on the tree so is is your is your question more around um, the form in which he took, or you have a problem with the fact that um, it says that he was a spirit? Um, I believe that Jesus rose from the grave. He resurrected mm -hmm. in the same body that he died in. I think he talked to, he talked prophetically about this um, in two places in John's Gospel. Mm -hmm. um, uh, unless you've got something to say, shall I shall I read them? Yeah, sure, yeah, that's fine. John chapter two, verse nineteen to twenty-two. Um, do you let want me to just read um, it? let me just uh, get there as well. Was it John chapter two, verse nineteen to twenty-two? Do you want to read it? And notice that uh, temple is a singular. The Jews misunderstood what he was talking about. The temple, they didn't understand. He's talking about his own body, mm -hmm. verse twenty-one, which is again another singular. Thank you. Sure. So, uh, was it 19 to 22, did you say? Yes. Yeah. So, um, uh, 19 to 22 says, uh, Jesus replied to them, tear down this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Um, the Jews then said, this temple was built in 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was talking about the temple of his body. When though he was raised up from the dead, his disciples recalled that he used to say this, and they believed the scripture and what Jesus had spoken. So he says in verse 19, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. And never mind in verse 20, the Jews misunderstood him. 
The explanation is in verse 21 that he's speaking of the temple of his body. Temple and body are both singular, not plural. He's not going to rise up in multiple fleshly bodies. He has one body, and the body he died in, that's the body that he's going to surely raise up in. At least that's the way that I would understand this. It's, it's prophetic that he's going to be put to death. Three days later, he's going to rise up in the temple of that body that was put to death. The same body that died will come alive again. The word resurrection means, means to stand up again. So he's going to stand up in the same body that was put to death. Wouldn't that explain why, when Thomas saw him in John 20, 27, his body bore the marks of crucifixion because it was the same body that died on the tree, you see. That's the way I would understand it. Yeah, I'm just looking at some thoughts I've got down here. Just bear with me one sec. I see your point, though. No, I don't understand what you're saying. Um, my, I don't want to um, do anything that's based on I think. Um, I want to do it based on what the scriptures say, which is why I'm not immediately responding because it's, um, it's very easy to respond with what you remember something saying as opposed to actually showing somebody what the scriptures say <laughs> specifically. Yes, yes. Um, so I don't want to, I don't want to say the wrong thing, if that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> my, my understanding um, from the things that obviously I was researching in the past, because it's quite a specific thing, um, was that he, I, I was of the understanding, he materialized in different fleshly bodies, which is why on a few occasions they didn't recognize him straight away. Um, and so that would account for the fact that they didn't, until he kind of made it clearer to them, understand this was Jesus, actually. He was walking beside them or was with them or was um, sharing the bread out with them when they were at the table with him. Um, just That's just back of my head coming to the front as I'm talking. Um, I'm just looking at some stuff. that I Remember that there. when we read John 2, verse 21, body is singular, not plural. Bodies, B-O-D-I-E-S, is a plural. Mm -hmm. John 2.21 says, but he was speaking of the temple, singular, mm -hmm. of his body, singular. So he's prophetically saying he's going to rise up in one body, the very same body that he died in. At least that's the so, way that I would understand it. So we've got like a research guide that we use with some of the bits and pieces. Um, so of, of the scripture 2.21, we've got a note here that says temple of his body. As this comment by the Apostle uh, what John are you, shows What are you here. reading from? Could you give me the correct full reference, please? If you want to read anything, whether it's the Bible yep. or a book, give me the full reference. Thank you. And I can just jot it down. I've got a pen here. I can jot it down. No problem. So it's our research guide. Is that the insight in the Scriptures? No. Okay, what is it? Um, we, we literally refer to it as the research guide. Um, it's freely available. Um, if you get the JW Library app or you go on our website, um, it's freely available to check along with the Bible. So you can either do it if you're looking at Bible scriptures and you don't want to use the app to do so, um, or if you had downloaded the app, you can um, see it alongside it as well. So it's, so it's something that's online that could be changed from day to day. It could be changed several times a week. It's It, it has I mean, no... It isn't. It isn't, but it obviously is changed to make sure that it's accurate. But it's a study aid just like any other one of the books or the inside book we would use. So it is changed, it is updated. So whatever you tell me now, it could change it updated, in a couple of yeah. years' time. Yeah, but then we've always had that with our publications. At different points, we might have a new version of the book to make sure that it's more in line with understanding, to make sure that there's nothing that isn't correct. But, that's, not, that's not really a, a new thing. Um, we've always made adjustments throughout the years. Um, but then if you have early and late editions of the same book, uh, at yep. least I can have a page number, the title of the book, and I can note whether it's an well, earlier or later edition. That, that's completely possible here too. If you, if you um, did download the JW Library app, which is available no. on... No, 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 no I, I don't do that. Um, I, well, just, I, just you, you... From, I just work from paper. Gotcha. It's well, much, I mean, much quicker. The only problem with, the only pr the only problem with that is... It is available to you to, to check, but if you don't want to check it, then that's that's fine. But that I'm just saying that's where I was about to read this thing from. Right. Okay. So, uh, just out of curiosity, what is what is the um, uh, is does this point come up because you're interested in learning more about it? Were there other points that, as you're reading through, that bothered you? Or was this simply the first one that 
was of interest that you wanted to talk about when you were reading through the the book or brochure what was a better phrase this is something that's quite different to what i'm used to okay that claimed that jesus was resurrected as a spirit um mm -hmm. and i say john 2 19 to 21 he clearly yep. states he's going to rise up in the same body singular that he died mm -hmm. in not in multiple bodies and there's a mm -hmm. parallel in john john 10 17 therefore my father loves me because i lay down my life that i may take it again not them okay. it he lays down his life he's going to take it up again um yeah okay well well what, what do you want to read to me thank you thank you no i just i the, the bit i wanted to read it just says um as this comment uh, by the apostle john shows jesus was using figurative speech comparing his anticipated death and resurrection to the demolish uh, demolition and reconstruction of a building how can it be figurative his his death was uh it actually happened it's a historical fact that he died and that he rose again it's not figurative it's it's literal his well, use of the word temple is figurative yes mm. but what he's referring to his death burial and resurrection was was literal mm. not not figurative and so so we've we've sort of touched on this before but the the point about jesus being re resurrected as a spirit um is it more to do with you feel that he was only he, he wasn't resurrected as a spirit he was in that body or you're happy to say that he resur was resurrected as a spirit but he materialized at points in one specific form um i i don't know what you're asking the bible Sorry. says that Sorry. jesus is the word resurrection means to stand up again okay and it means to so, stand no, up I'm, in the I'm same body that you died in not a a, a, a a newly created body or not as a spirit that's not a resurrection um, so so you don't believe he um, at any point became a spirit in heaven after this point I, I believe that Jesus has always been a spirit in his deity he's never stopped okay. being a spirit even when he um, was on this earth he had two natures divine and human and, and uh, in his deity he's always been the same spirit as the Father and the Holy Spirit and secondly so and mm -hmm. secondly, in his human nature, humanity is not simply a body of flesh. He would have had a human spirit as well as a hum, uh, human body. Uh, that's why he said to the Father when he was dying, I think it's Luke twenty three forty six. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. That's his human spirit that he's putting mm -hmm. into his Father's hand, not his okay. divine spirit. Sure. Um, so... <laughs> We don't. We wouldn't disagree with the fact that he appeared in the form that he was when he was um, when it, when he was on the stake. We wouldn't disagree that that might be one of the forms that he took, but we would say that he also might have taken other forms at points. That which is something you can because I I saw that before um, in the inside book, which sounds like you might have a. Do you have a copy of that or a reference? Oh to yes, it? yes, I've, I've got a copy of that. Yes. Okay. Good to do. Have you, have you spoken to witnesses before them? Um, I have. Um, you used to have carts out on the street. And oh, I remember yeah. talking um, to them beside the carts. But what they basically said was go to jw.org and do, do some research. They didn't really want to really look at this in any real depth or substance. Okay. And so the, the insight books, how did you get them? Did somebody, a witness you speak to, give them to you? Or did you have you been to the meetings before? Um, I wrote away for them. Oh, really? You're two, you're two encyclopedias, yes. I wrote, oh, well. I wrote away for them years ago. Hmm. Um, um, so, yeah, so in the insight book, let me try and find the... Um, I paid, f I paid for the postage. I think the postage was about £10 because both volumes were quite, quite heavy. Um, <laughs> yeah, they are quite big. Um, regarding Jesus's fleshly body, when sure. he, when he died, he was buried. Mm -hmm. Yes, we we both agree on that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. But Acts two thirty one says that this physical body did not see corruption. I'll read it. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'll read from verse thirty. Therefore, being a prophet, this is talking about Jesus, and knowing yep. that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his body, according to the flesh. Uh, actually, sorry, I think it's a reference to King David. Me and my big mouth. 
It's a quotation from Psalm 132. I think it's a prophecy of David about the cry. Sorry, that's a, mm. a little bit of a faux pas. That he would raise up the Christ to sit on his throne. He, foreseeing this, spoke concerning the resurrection of the Christ, that his soul was not left in Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. So Jesus' flesh didn't see corruption. And when they went into the tomb, the tomb was empty, the grave clothes were folded up. Why was there no body there? Well, because the body didn't see corruption, because it was that body that was resurrected. That's how the Christian church... Um, in all its flavours, Catholic, Protestant, Eastern Orthodox. That's how mm -hmm. they've understood that for 2,000 years. That's how all the people with PhDs that I know of mm -hmm. in Greek and Hebrew would understand that. Even mm -hmm. people, I got Thayer's, Thayer's lexicon. Well, Thayer was a Unitarian. He wasn't a Trinitarian. I've got a copy of his um, uh, lexicon. Uh, even Thayer would agree with that. And Thayer wasn't Catholic, Protestant or Orthodox, he was Unitarian. Mm. When it says his his flesh didn't, nor did his flesh see corruption, would you agree that's because it was that body of flesh that was resurrected? And if it wasn't, how do you explain the fact that the grave was empty and it says his flesh did not see corruption in Acts 2.31? Well, if I'm being honest with you, it's an interesting point and so in these situations what i would do is i'd go away i'd study it i'd cross-reference scripture and make sure i was getting an answer from the bible so <clears throat> that is what i would suggest i do yeah. and then i can come back to you we can chat about it again because yeah. obviously we've we've come to have this chat here on zoom and you've already got in your mind the different references i it's quite a specific point i can't recall everything i know about everything with all the scripture backing to it um so but i'm very happy to I, go away based yes, on what you've said yes, and sure. come back and continue chatting um, um, it's i did tell point. you it was the resurrection i did quote i did say it was going to be enjoy life forever oh i know but with, with on the resurrection of jesus as a spirit. and things like that it's it's difficult to know to why quite what detail i wasn't sure how you were coming at it as to which point you wanted to make so yeah. um i wasn't sure if you had a problem with it as a statement overall i wasn't sure if you had a problem with um it stating that he went to heaven and you wanted to point out that he materialized to people at points so i didn't know uh, from which area yeah. to to see what it was that you wanted to understand um, but that's why i was asking the, cl the clarification clarification question um you you said about the fact that um you feel like it's only in this form this body he was resurrected physically to that body and that body was what he used to to come and see the um see the disciples different points but um, are you also saying that you disagree at any point that he was resurrected as a spirit or is your point that you, you're okay with the fact that it says he's resurrected as spirit but it's very specifically only in one form when he then visited them and that was that body is that what you're saying uh, your question's so convoluted i i don't understand okay so, <laughs> i just believe the standard christian position held by catholic yeah. protestant and eastern orthodox people for two thousand years that jesus christ died in the same body he died, yeah. his, he was buried, his flesh did not see corruption, Acts 2.31, because that body that was in the tomb resurrected. That's why the tomb was empty. The tomb was empty okay. because that body that was dead resurrected mm -hmm. from the dead. The word resurrection means to stand up again. If you believe yeah. Jesus was recreated as a spirit creature, then that's not a resurrection. It's not to stand up again in the same body that you die in. That's a recreation as a spirit creature. It's not a resurrection. Okay. So what is your understanding of what happened to that body? Well, I've just told you. No, as in like, it wasn't physically there anymore in the tomb, as you said, so... It was resurrected. Like it yeah, but what, where? Do you say it materialized physically somewhere else? Or what is it that you're saying? Were you saying he got up and physically walked out of the tomb? Well, the Bible doesn't record that. I can only talk about passages that the Bible talks about. I, yeah. I, I cannot add to the Bible. Well, because I'm, it's like the, the soldier I'm not only the saw. Pope. <laughs> no, <laughs> um, no, no, but uh, again, um, please understand, I'm asking questions so I can understand what you're 
thoughts yeah. are, what what you think about it. I'm not asking questions to catch you out. I'm, well, I'm purely trying to make sure that I'm on the same page of what you feel um, the scriptures say so that I can make sure that I'm looking at things from the right angle. I think that the word body in the singular in John 2.21 is very significant. That's the key point for you, isn't it? Yes, I think uh, uh, John 2.19, Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple. Now, of course, I, I understand the temple is not literal. That's a figure of speech. But he's talking about a literal historical event, his death, burial and resurrection. Destroy this temple, singular, and in three days I will raise it, not them, it, singular, up. Verse 21. But he was speaking of the temple, singular, of his body, singular. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I read in the insight in the scriptures, I think it was mm -hmm. um, 786. Let's have a quick look. No, um, it was the insight in the scriptures. And it said that when Jesus rose from the dead, he rose as a spirit creature, but he then manifested numerous fleshly bodies, B-O-D-I-E-S, a plural, on different occasions as and when he needed um, these bodies. Now, here we are. It's um, Insight Volume 2, page 786. I'll just yeah, read I'm it. Yeah, I'm looking at that right now. However, for okay. 40... So is it, is it the point that starts heavenly resurrection, Jesus Christ is called the firstborn from no. the dead? Is that the paragraph? No, it's however for 40 days after his resurrection, yep. Jesus appeared to his disciples on different occasions in various mm -hmm. fleshly bodies, B-O-D-I-E-S, a plural. Just yes. as the angels had appeared to men of ancient times. Well, they didn't appear in <laughs> different fleshly bodies. Um just like those angels he had the power to construct and to dis and to disintegrate those fleshly bodies at will bodies are plural for the purpose of proving visibly that he had been resurrected so your book really is saying that jesus rose from the grave he was recreated in about 10 different bodies one was a spirit body and the other roughly eight to ten i'm not sure how many post-resurrection appearances there were but sure. probably about um, eight to ten. So he, you're saying that he resurrected in ten different bodies, plural. I think what it, I don't think it's quite saying that. I think what it's actually saying is um, he was resur resurrected back as a spirit creature, and then when he appeared to them, he rematerialized in a body that which was temporary to him at the time. Which was temporary. Correct. Correct. So he he recreated about eight to ten temporary fleshly bodies. Yeah, sorry, I thought you were saying at once there were multiple. No, he, no, no. Right, fine. that's fine. I'm just again, it's all clarification. It's all just making yeah. sure on the same page. Okay. Um, Luke twenty four thirty nine is mm -hmm. quite significant. Um, the explanation before I go there, in verse fifteen and sixteen, it explains why people didn't recognize Jesus. It simply mm -hmm. says in Luke twenty four sixteen, but their eyes were restrained, so they did not know him. Mm -hmm. So it was God's will that people didn't recognize Christ until a certain time, and only certain people were to recognize him. Sure. So it was God who restrained their eyes. So the mm -hmm. fact that Jesus wasn't recognized doesn't prove that he, he had risen up in a different body. Okay, um, no problem. But at verse 39, do you want to read 39 to 43, please? So that's Luke 24, mm -hmm. 39. Yeah. Two seconds. Twenty-four, thirty-nine, 39 or 29, sorry. Uh, 39, please. 39. See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones just as you uh, see that I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet, and then it says that he ate some food before them to prove that he had risen up mm -hmm. in a body of flesh and bones. He, he <laughs> says in verse 39, it is I myself. <laughs> it doesn't say this is a manifestation of me or an apparition of me or some <laughs> ghost or, or spirit. He says it's I myself, then he shows them his hands and his feet. It says that twice. It says that in verse 39 and verse 40. Obviously, mm -hmm. because the body he's 
appearing before them in bears the marks of crucifixion well if the tomb is empty wouldn't the explanation be that that's the body that had just risen from the dead that's why the tomb is empty and perhaps the most significant of all he says for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see i that i have a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see i have sure so jesus is saying he hasn't risen as a spirit creature he's risen from well, his grave he's... in the same body that he he died in that bears the marks mm -hmm. of crucifixion and how mm -hmm. do you explain him saying it is i myself and a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that i have so when when the angel um came and moved the stone mm -hmm. as it says in the scriptures he would have had to have physically done so right as yeah. as saw also with the angel when he um well i guess that's that's more of a miraculous act when the angel killed 185,000 so there's not necessarily a physical touching there but the angel certainly moved the stone as it says in the scriptures so would would you have a problem with that as well because he he would have moved it no okay and why would you so with this one where he says so would you not would you then say that that angel was not a spirit creature i'm not interested in angels not interested no i, don't, no, I know but it's a logical comparison well that's all i'm asking to discuss jesus his resurrection it's the scriptures pertinent to Jesus' resurrection that are significant, not 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 angels. I, I know that angels not significant, but he was a, an angel was a spirit creature, just as it's saying that Jesus here. Your problem is that he, the scriptures that I'm talking about, are saying that he became a spirit creature. Well, he might have been a higher up spirit creature, but he was still a spirit creature. So if you have a problem with this point here, that's in thirty nine. I'm just asking, does that make you think differently about the angel who physically moved the stone? That's all. No, no. You said the scriptures that teach that Jesus became a spirit creature. You said those were your words? The, the scriptures that said... Well, I'm just talking about the scriptures that you're referring to that I would say it says that Jesus, when it became a spirit creature, was resurrected in right. the spirit as a spirit creature. Which verses well, teach that Jesus was resurrected as a spirit creature? I'm pretty sure we those. read one earlier that said he was raised as a spirit. Oh, excuse me. That's all right. Difficult to get sleep at the moment, isn't it, because of the heat? Mm, yeah, exactly. Well, I've had, I've had COVID as well for the last still got it, oh. <laughs> which doesn't help. <laughs> um, you're not thinking of Peter. First Peter three eight three eighteen. Just read that for me. For Christ also suffered once for sin, the just for the unjust, that he might that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. No, and most Bibles true. read "put to death in the flesh, but made alive <laughs> in the Spirit," because it's uh, it's two datives. Dative would be movement in Greek, with the little knowledge that I have. Um, well, maybe you'd like to get back to me on that one. Yeah, no, that that's what I think is the best thing. Like, like I said at the very beginning, um, I don't want to say anything that's just, just born out of remembering my knowledge on certain things. I would like to make sure that anything I'm saying is all perfectly based on exactly what the scriptures say although um, i did tell you about a week ago was it a week ago that i would want to look at the resurrection of jesus yes yes okay um i've got i've got four so I'm, I'm not so what are you saying I, I i'm not quite sure what that point meant well i i just we did agree we were going to look at the resurrection of jesus christ today well that's 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 very true yes. but um Good. from not a specific angle i didn't know you were going to um have a problem with some of these things i thought you were just interested to find out so i thought we were going to go through the material i didn't think it was something that we were going to get into a debate about that's all oh i'm i'm not trying to trying to debate um i have found four scriptures where mm -hmm. post-resurrection jesus christ is called a man mm -hmm. now if he's called a man either 15 years 30 years 40 years 
mm-hmm. after the resurrection. Yeah. I'd want an explanation for that, because if Jesus rose as a spirit creature, why did the Bible writers call him a man, context mm-hmm. being many years after the resurrection? And what um, what do other Christian denominations say about that? Well, I, as I've said, everyone for 2,000 years agrees, Catholic, Protestant, Orthodox, even Unitarians like Thayer, that mm-hmm. Jesus Christ rose from the dead. He rose in the very same body that he died in. Now, if that's okay. wrong, if Orthodox Christianity is wrong, mm-hmm. OK, I'm willing to listen to what you've got to say, but I would expect a very thorough, complete mm-hmm. and detailed explanation as to why everyone's got it wrong for 2,000 years. Everyone, absolutely and, everyone's got it wrong. But, and that's exactly why I want to go away, to make sure I'm not giving you a, a half answer. OK. Um, it says in Hebrews 6.20, this is the first of the four verses, it's talking about Christ being high priest, and he's high priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. If Christ <laughs> is high priest forever, I don't know when Hebrews was written, um, some people do dispute it was written by Paul, but probably written in the 50s or the 60s. So you're looking at a good 30 years after the resurrection. Jesus Christ is high priest forever. So when I read this verse, I would want to know, do you do you believe that Jesus Christ is a high priest today as well as when this epistle was written? It's talking about so Christ. I think, I think maybe what we'll do is maybe because that sounds like another point to be talking about well i said i've got four this is the first of four okay so is this is this all um as a basis for the the main point that we've been talking about here about him being resurrected in his same body yes i've told you i've got four points Mm -hmm. that are standard christian verses that christians have used for two thousand years So, Rob, I, d- I don't have a problem with that. Again, I'm just asking to make sure that it wasn't a separate point so that I can make sure that when I write them down, it's all regards Jesus, the same thing. Jesus well. Christ is called a man post-resurrection four times. Can I go through these four points? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, no problem. So, I'll note down the verses yeah, too. So the first is Hebrews 6.20. Yep. Speaking of Christ, where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus, having become high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Now, I don't believe that Christ stopped his high priestly office um, at his resurrection. I believe he's high priest now. Paul, or the writer of Hebrews, is saying that Christ is high priest when he wrote this epistle in the late 50s or the early 60s. Just want to know, would you agree Christ is a high priest forever, which means he, Christ is a high priest now, and he's a high priest when Paul, or, or maybe it was Apollos who wrote this, Mm-hmm. when Paul wrote this in the late 50s, early 60s. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, okay. If you go back to the previous chapter, the start of Hebrews chapter 5, verse 1, we read that the high priest was taken from among men. Not taken from angels, not taken from amongst men and women, only taken from among men, male human beings. For, the, for every high priest taken from among men is appointed for men in things pertaining to God, that he might offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. So the high priest was taken from among men, not from among men and women, not from among <coughs> angels. Christ, therefore, must be a man, and Hebrews 6.20 says that he's high priest forever. So if he's high priest forever, he's high priest now. And as the high priest must be a man, Christ is a man right now in the year 2022. So if if you believe he's still a man in 2022, do you believe that he's on the earth? No. He he ascended up to heaven, Acts 1, 9 to 11. So you believe he's a human being in heaven? Yes. Okay. Well, he has to be somewhere, doesn't he? I mean, if he's not in heaven and if he's not on earth, then where would he be? Would he be in hell? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I don't wish to be blasphemous about that or, or flippant, but um, yeah. if he's not in heaven and he's not in hell, then where, where, where is he? The second verse, 
uses the word anthropos, man. It's written in the present tense. I actually got this wrong. I thought the verbs were in verse 5 and the verbs actually come from verse 4. So a very clever lady corrected me in this and I accept that correction. I, I learned something there. So it's Hebrew, it's, it's, sorry, it's 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4 and 5. Timothy 2, 4 and 5. Okay, it's all in the present tense, and Paul's writing about 30 years after the resurrection. And note that Paul calls Christ the man Christ Jesus, Anthropos man. He doesn't say he was the man Christ Jesus, because this is all in the present tense. The tense is changed later, but verses 4 and 5 are present tense. So I'll read from verse 4. Who desires, present tense, all men to be saved, and to come to... The knowledge of the truth, present tense. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, still present tense, the man Christ Jesus. So when Paul wrote this in AD 60, he calls Christ a man. Because Christ, 30 years after the resurrection, was a man. Um, the third verse is Acts 17. 31. This is about 15 years, maybe 20 years after the resurrection. I actually went to Mars Hill. Let me show you. Have I got it? I've got it here somewhere. Here we are. I went to, um, I went on a cruise many years ago and I went to um, the Greek temple at the top of the hill. And Mars, Mars Hill is at the bottom where Paul stood up to preach. And so I grabbed a rock. Now, this is probably a rock that somebody threw up centuries ago, but it's probably, it hasn't been actually, I don't know, but I got this from the top of Mars Hill. So this is my little bit of Mars Hill. That's cool. <laughs> um, in Acts 17.31, we find man slap bang in the middle of the verse, and the Greek word apparently means a male human. So it's similar to anthropos similar word to anthropos the start of the verse talks about the coming resurrection which hasn't happened yet and we'll read that god is going to judge the world by the man now hold on if it says god's don't go to judge the world and that would be after armageddon okay if god's going to judge the world by a man wouldn't that mean that christ is going to be a man at the time when the judgment takes place not a spirit creature, a man. Then you go to the end of the verse and it says about Christ raising him from the dead, that the Father has raised him from the dead. But the antecedent for him is man. The linguistic antecedent in the sentence for him raising him from the dead, the him there, who is that him? It's not the Father, it's the man. So this proves that Jesus was resurrected as a man and it also proves that the still future coming judgment, um, Christ is going to judge the world as a man. So I'll read it. Acts 17, 31. Oh, oh, sorry, let me, um, let me just stop you there just for a second. Yeah, sure. our, meet, our meeting will cut off only because I, have, um, I don't pay for Zoom. So if you want, I can just send you a new code so we can carry on. Um, I've only got one more verse to do after this. I'm going to be very quick. I, it will, but the trouble is I, I, it will cut off without yeah. me doing it. I can't. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If you send me yeah. a new, new, new code when it when it cuts yeah, yeah. off. Acts, no Acts seventeen thirty one. Because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man, man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. So raising him from the dead. The antecedent <laughs> for him is man. And when it says that he will judge the world. The Father will judge the world in righteousness by the man. That's obviously a reference to Christ. Christ is there called a man. So post-resurrection, Christ is a man. And the Zoom's just ended. Hello. Hello. Okay. Um, so it, I've basically, basically finished. So Acts 17.31 uses yep. the word man slap bang in the middle of the sentence. It talks about Christ. It says the Father has, well, it says he, but that means Father has raised him from the dead. The antecedent for him is man, so Christ is a man. 
and at the start of the sentence, because he, that's the Father, has appointed the day on which he, the Father, will judge the world in righteousness by the man, that's Christ, whom he has ordained. So at the coming judgment, it's going to be a man who will judge us, not a spirit creature. A reference to Jesus. Um, the final verse is rather complicated. Matthew twenty six sixty four. I was baptised in an Assemblies of God church, and um, in churches of that sort of flavour, anything with an American flavour, um, at a popular level, uh, you're taught dispensationalism as truth. And that's an American system of interpreting the Bible. Some of the world's best Bible teachers, in my opinion, are mm -hmm. American, James White and mm -hmm. the late R.C. Sproul. But at the popular level, at the popular level, especially within the charismatic and Pentecostal movement, I mean, it's a basket case of lunacy. And unfortunately for every person who listens to a decent, educated American scholar, there's a thousand listening to lunatics like Benny Hinn and Kenneth Copeland and Paula White and Todd White on God TV and Trinity Broadcasting Network and other other similar things. What was the what was the name of, of what you referred to as, as the way you, you reason or interpret scripture? What was the word? No, I don't. But oh, sorry. In 1985, when I was baptised, American mm. evangelicalism take, takes dispensationalism as orthodoxy and that's a system of interpreting the bible literally so they would look at this first okay is, is that what you uh you like to use that way of doing it too is that is that what you're saying no i totally reject it oh sorry right i, I would be with the educated yeah. scholars i'd be with gotcha. james white and rc sproul educated people who know what they're talking about i don't want to listen yeah. to billy bob joe who can bang a tambourine yeah. for two hours i'm not interested <laughs> I have no interest at all. Yep. Um, if you go to Matthew twenty six sixty four, yep. this is Jesus before the high priest. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says to him, it is as you said, nevertheless, I say to you hereafter, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. So as a young Christian, I was taught, well, this is obviously the second coming of Christ. Okay, because... People of that flavour, dispensationalists, are, are fixated upon certain ways of interpreting scripture. There, are, there is a series of books and films called the Left Behind series. Okay, They're very, very popular indeed, and they're very influential in promoting what's called the rapture and a certain way of interpreting the Bible. And they would often see clouds of heaven as referring to the second coming. Now, the second coming hasn't happened yet. OK, it's still it's still future. Who knows when it's going to happen? More educated people would say clouds of heaven is a symbol of God's judgment. So clouds of heaven, Jesus is here because he's speaking to the high priest. He's prophetically talking about the destruction of the Jewish temple and the Jewish system in AD 70. And that's how I would interpret that. But I wish to add, I am not a preterist. A preterist is the diametrical opposite of dispensationalism. They say all prophecy has been fulfilled. There's nothing prophetic in the Bible at all. It's all been fulfilled. So I'm not a preterist. I'm not a dispensationalist. When you, when you look at the verse, if you believe this is referring to the second coming of Christ, it hasn't happened yet. I guess as a Jehovah's Witness, if you think this refers to 1914, that's 1900 years after Christ's resurrection. I would see this as referring to AD 70. That's 40 years after Christ's resurrection. But notice the title that Christ uses of himself. The high priest, the high priest asks him, are you the son of God? But in Jesus' answer, he calls himself the son of man. Now, son of man cannot be possibly... There is no way Son of Man can ever refer to a non-human spirit creature because the phrase Son of Man means of the nature of men. If I say you're a Son of Man, it means you're human. But you can call a dog or a cat or a parrot a Son of Man. And Jesus is called a Son of Man here. So 
However you interpret this verse, whether you think it's AD 70, whether you think it's 1914, or whether you think it's this, the second coming of Christ, Christ is going to be a human being. Son of man must be a human being. That 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 that's basically all I all I've got to say. But I, I have spent many hours, as you can probably tell, um, mm. looking at you. Oh, I mean, yeah, no, you obviously um, do very thorough research, and it shows you've definitely got a love of the Bible. Yeah, which is which is nice to see because you know so many people we uh, you know we'll have a conversation with or, or try to have a conversation with or show things from the Bible. And, and these days, I think a lot of people are quite apathetic towards anything, um, you know, biblically related. So, so it is nice to speak to somebody who cares about the Bible.